The Seattle Seahawks wrapped up their final training camp session before the pads go on. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. It is Sunday, and Sunday is a day of rest for the Seattle Seahawks. We will not be seeing any more training camp updates from today because there's no training camp. So after four straight days of Seattle Seahawks training camp, we are taking a day off, which seems pretty well deserved because according to the things that I've heard and the things that I've seen, the team looks pretty good so far. Most of the players look like they're doing their job. A few guys look like they might be going above and beyond. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but uh, Monday, tomorrow, is the first day where the squad puts pads on and we actually get to see a little more physicality. So they got to rest up, they got to get ready, and got to hit the field tomorrow with the pads on, hitting some guys, doing some actual tackling. It gets a little more serious starting tomorrow. But um, before we get there, I do want to recap some of the things that were said, some of the things that were seen from day four, which was yesterday. Uh, we've got the usual collection of write-ups. We got this from uh, Corbin over on SI.com. He's got his write-up from day four. Um, we got John Boyle over here on Seahawks.com. He's got his. Greg Bell did his over on um, the News Tribune. I'm going to be kind of running through some of the consistent storylines and general consensus from all the people who were passing along information from... Uh, from uh, this uh, particular training camp session. So before we get into that, thank you for liking the video. I hope you like it. Please like the video if you do. Helps the channel out a lot. Uh, subscribe if you're new and you uh, want daily Seahawks content. Become a channel member for $2 a month. Uh, click the notification bell if you want notifications every time a video goes live. Those are the best ways to help the channel. All right. So if you're trying to summarize what went down today from Seahawks training camp. Some of the stuff that you hear is going to be fam familiar from the first few days. Like, for instance, Geno Smith. Geno Smith continues to have a really good start to training camp. And in this particular um, training camp session, it was JSN that he seemed to be hitting a lot. So... A lot of people are going to get really excited about that, and you should be, because this has the potential to really change the way in which this offense works, because JSN is going to help this team a lot on third down. And third down is an area this team has really struggled in for a very long time. This team has not been good on third down outside of one, maybe two seasons since, really, Pete Carroll got here. So... A guy like JSN is the linchpin to that issue getting fixed. So definitely exciting stuff there from JSN. So Geno Smith remains on a really, really high plane of quarterback play right now. So definitely reason to get excited. Um, on top of JSN, I also want to say um, Aesop Winston. Looked uh, good, according to some of the reporters here. We got Brady Henderson mentioning it. I think it was uh, John Boyle also mentioned Aesop Winston. And Aesop Winston, his connection comes in the form of his work with Sam Howell, who did have a better day today. Um, he was able to have a little more accuracy, and he was able to hit some good plays to guys like Aesop, but also a little bit of Jake Bobo as well. So starting to come along here, still clearly QB2. And I don't think anything that happens this training camp is going to change that. But, I mean, we need Howell to look competent, right? We traded for the guy. If Sam Howell ends up being not any different in terms of his competency than a guy you could have signed for a million and a half out of um, free agency, then that's bad. We need him to be something a little bit more than that. So, good to hear. He's at least trending in the right direction here. Um... Beyond the JSN and Aesop Winston stuff, also been hearing there's been a focus on getting Noah Fant involved in the passing game, which we have not seen for the last two years. So you give him the money, you you need him to be able to uh, contribute, but um, 
We're hearing more and more good things about the connection that Geno Smith is developing with Noah Fant. So that's good. Excited about that. He's another guy who can help change the fortunes of this team on third down. The most important thing on third down is the offensive line. But guys like JSN who get open quickly and Noah Fant who can provide kind of a safety blanket <coughs> excuse me, underneath as a tight end while also threatening deep down the field because he is a great athlete, it matters too. Um, another thing that several people talked about, uh, I think we saw this from Greg Bell, and I think we saw it from Corbin Smith, and we might have seen it from uh, John Boyle as well, but we also saw it from other guys, Trey Brown. Trey Brown looks like he's ready to go. Trey Brown looks like he's ready to prove that he deserves another contract in this league, and not just a nothing contract, a, a real contract here. So Trey Brown definitely making a push to earn some playing time here, playing time that will not be easy to get. So it's not going to be easy because he's got so many guys in front of him. There's so much going on in the secondary that I think that McDonald likes, and there's so much potential flexibility there. But Trey Brown is clearly making a push to demand playing time. Trey Brown is very clearly doing things that are um, dictating uh, that he has to be out there because he's just better. And I do believe that he is a better, potentially at least better in coverage than a Mike Jackson. I think Mike Jackson is a better tackler. But if Trey Brown can do enough in coverage, then he can kind of overcome his deficiency in an area like that. So lots of really good coverage from Trey Brown. I talked about it a little bit yesterday. He was defending DK Metcalf on some fade routes in the end zone. And he... He is like half a foot shorter than DK and 50 pounds lighter, but he's in there fighting and he's breaking up the pass. And, you know, some people might say that, hey, that doesn't say anything good about DK not being able to win that battle. And sure, there's a little bit of that going on, but Trey Brown is, he's a dog. He's in there fighting and he's, his play demands additional reps when the season starts. Great news there. Um... Going beyond that, Kayvon Wallace is another guy that I want to shout out here. He had an interception of Sam Howell in the red zone. Um, it was one of the bad Sam Howell plays. He's still, he's still having some issues. Don't get my earlier words twisted here. We're still not where we need to be with Sam Howell quite yet, but the interception he threw yesterday was Kayvon Wallace, and I saw this from a couple of different guys. Kayvon Wallace has looked really good, very versatile, lining up all over the place, doing a bunch of different things. He is making a push to, I don't think, take a starting job, but maybe maybe he's advocating for more three safety looks where we have Love, Jenkins, and Wallace on the field at the same time, which I know further complicates the fact that we have a very crowded secondary right now, but Kayvon Wallace looks good, and he's a guy who's played in the NFL a pretty decent amount already. So I think that a guy like Kayvon Wallace... Um, may, may just earn himself a little bit of playing time, and the reports so far from him look really, really good. We know how important having a versatile safety is to a Mike McDonald defense, because we saw it last year in Baltimore, and while everybody's kind of focused in on what he's going to do with Devin Witherspoon, don't be surprised if it's a guy like Kevon Wallace that ends up making a surprise push here. Also hearing some nice things about D. Williams playing corner, which he's the receiver that is temporarily playing corner a little bit for us. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to manifest into anything, but I've actually heard some good things about him as well, so good for him. So those would be some other highlights. Uh, going beyond that, we have, um, yeah, Aesop Winston catching a touchdown from, or excuse me, a one-handed catch from Sam Howell with Mike Jack all over him. And I wanted to highlight this comment from Dugar because it kind of encapsulates something that I've been um, getting a lot from training camp so far. The offense is doing well, but the defense is making it hard on them. So the kind of important phrase here is that Aesop Winston had a one-handed snag with Mike Jack all over him. I'm hearing a lot of that right now. This guy made a tough catch with a defender all over him. This guy made a really tough grab with the coverage right there. So the offense looks better than the defense overall so far, I think, but it does seem to me 
that this this uh this defense is doing about as good as you could hope at this point. And I'll say it again, the offense should probably be a little ahead of the defense right now simply because the offense was better than the defense by a pretty wide margin last year. They brought back a quarterback like a Geno Smith who was the signal caller and has a lot of familiarity with these guys, whereas the signal caller for the defense, I guess you could say it was Bobby Wagner. He, he's not here anymore. Jordan Brooks, not here anymore. I feel like what was lost on defense was in terms of like leadership and actually getting everybody in the right place, probably a little more significant. So great to hear. One thing from Geno Smith, I think this was said yesterday. It might've been said the day before, but Dugar had a little article on it on the New York Times talking about DK Metcalf. Geno Smith says there's 100% another level DK Metcalf can get to this season. I'm just trying to push him and hopefully I can be that quarterback that he needs to unlock that. And this is something that I think is really, really good to think about, really, really good to talk about. The DK Metcalf thing where I know that there are some Seahawks fans that are a little bit, they're not really sure about Metcalf anymore. I think that most people look at DK Metcalf and they see the phenomenal physical talent, but then they look at the production over the last three years and they're like, well, he's, he, he's good, but he's not great. And I think a lot of that is circumstantial. And I'm not saying that it's going to necessarily go away this year because we are so deep at receiver and we are so deep with pass catchers and this offense is pretty loaded. So... I'm not saying that DK Metcalf's going to go out there and put up like an 1800 yard season that's going to justify how some people like me and Hawks Nest and a few others out there do talk about him. But I look at something like this and I'm like, I, I really hope I see it because if we don't see it, I think there's going to be a massive push to try to trade Metcalf in the upcoming offseason. And I don't really want that. So. Maybe DK won't have an 1,800-yard season because that's just not going to happen with the talent he has around him. But if he can be more efficient, if he can be a little more explosive, if he can get some of the extracurricular stuff a little more under control, I think that would get the fan base in a slightly different mental place with him. And I think that's really important here. I think he's one of the most talented players the Seahawks have ever had. And I don't want to run that guy out of town when he's still in his prime. Maybe not even in his prime yet, but... Um, I want to see that next level, and I think it's there. The talent clearly outpaces the production. Just need to get everything in the right place. All right, so there was one little funny thing that happened at the end of training camp today where a bunch of young players left the team, left the field and went into the team facility after practice. Um, Mike McDonald wasn't having it. He called them all back. He got the assistants to pull those guys back out into the field to sign autographs. And this was something that got highlighted by a lot of the writers. It got highlighted by a lot of the um, beat beat writers about how the uh, beat reporters, excuse me, that, you know, he he's not going to let things slide. He's not going to let things be done in a way that he doesn't like. He's going to be very stringent about this stuff. And when you're, a, especially when you're a younger player, but really any Seahawks player, and I think most of the veterans were doing this too, when you're doing training camp stuff and you have a bunch of fans in attendance to watch... You want to show those guys appreciation and McDonald wasn't going to uh, allow those guys to just uh, slink away. So pretty cool. I thought that was a pretty interesting story. Uh, injury stuff. Draymond Jones did not practice. Missed the end of uh, practice two days ago. Did not practice at all yesterday. Apparent leg injury. However, we did get this from McDonald. He nicked his hammy, but it doesn't look serious. So very good chance that he'll be back on Monday, at least partially. Uh, because obviously Sunday's a day off. So nothing to really worry about here, it looks like, but uh, it was enough to keep him out. We also had George Fant. Uh, George Fant was back. He had a rest day yesterday, but he was back. Or excuse me, rest day two days ago. Yesterday he was back. Jonathan Hankins got a day off, but it's also a veteran rest day. And uh, DJ James continues to be held out. So it seems like he actually has a non-trivial injury. And unlike a guy like Draymond Jones, where Draymond Jones is a veteran, practice it doesn't matter as much, uh, DJ James is a rookie. He needs these reps, so it's definitely not good for him to be held out. Jerome Baker, rest day, yesterday, rest day two days ago, was back at practice yesterday. So totally fine. Looks like, looks like we're good to go. And that just leaves us with Monday. When the pads go on, 
and things get a lot more physical. So that was a rundown of yesterday's training camp session. Let me know what you think down below. See you guys later. Go Hawks.